Hello again. In this video we're going to be doing an out of the box review of one of the new range of telescopes from Skywatcher, namely the Quattro 10CF which is the carbon fibre version. Um, the Quattros are available in steel or carbon fibre as, as options and they come in a 10 inch and an 8 inch and I believe there's a 12 inch although that's just under a little bit of debate at the moment. So the first thing we've got to do obviously is wait for the box. <coughs> And that could be it right now. Well, as you can see, it's quite a big box. Uh, now the thing is, obviously, that was sort of acting for the video. When, when you've really got a, a big parcel due that's something as exciting as this, it doesn't quite happen this way, does it? Right, obviously with a box of this size I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting sort of myself and the box into the field of view of the camera so uh, there will be a few parts where I just um, amputate certain parts of myself probably like my head or whichever which I don't know it's not no, no bad thing really I suppose. Uh, right, first thing to do obviously is to take our box cutting knife uh, or a Stanley knife and just cut through the seals on the box. Right, if we just tip this box towards you a little bit, this is uh, the order that everything came in. As you can see, there's quite a bit of polystyrene sort of foam padding in there, holding everything together, and a couple of boxes that are just um, sort of floating about in there. So what we'll do first is have a look what's in these various boxes. Uh, this one. seems to have some bubble wrap in there and very little else apart from hmm okay this seems to be uh, some sort of an extension probably for the focuser um, but you do have to ask uh, don't ask because I don't next we've got another box here Contains. Oh. Now you then. I did order um, an extra part for mine, and I don't know if this is a standard part or if, in fact, actually that's that's not part of this scope. This is actually a field flattener for me ED80 that they've just put in the same box for me. So we'll put that up to one side. Uh, what else have we got in here? There is another box in here somewhere. Here we go. And this 
again, nicely bubble wrapped. Uh, you know, everything seems to have been packed quite well. Uh, this is the straight through finder for the scope. Which looks like the normal Skywatcher straight through 9B50 finder. I actually have a right angled finder that I bought as an extra some time ago and for a, a good size new Tony and I would I would really recommend that you that you get a, a right angled finder for it. It just makes things a, a whole lot easier. Um, I can't see any more actual boxes in there. So next we'll pull out the scope itself. which is surprisingly very, very heavy. Uh, obviously there's quite a large lump of glass in there. Um, what we'll do firstly is we'll just get this box out of the way because there's just an instruction book in there now and uh, uh, some advertising literature. That seems to be everything in the box. Right, so what we'll do is we'll just get some of this packaging out of the way and move on to the tube itself. Okay, onto the tube itself. Um, it's coated in sort of, you know, a flat with a normal plastic bag over the top of it. And as is the norm with Skywatcher, they do tend to coat the tube with tissue and then put the rings over the top um, just to stop any sort of friction or movement scraping your tube more than anything else. So what we'll do is just remove the rings like so now Whilst we're on the subject of the rings, I will pass on my pet hate of Skywatcher products, and that is the actual dovetail supplied with the bigger range of scopes. Um, I, but I truly think that on telescopes that are of, of sort of eight inch or higher, um, Skywatcher really need to start supplying a better quality dovetail than the Vixen one that comes as standard. I think really that uh, a Lost Mandy style dovetail player should be supplied with the bigger scopes because it, it, I just feel that it needs it. Now if you don't know what a Lost Mandy style dovetail plate is, that would be like this. This is a Lost Mandy style dovetail plate and if you compare it to standard Vixen dovetail plate and we'll just come in a little bit closer for you to have a look. You can see why because you've got you know you've got really a lot of weight there to um, to support in your mount so just my little pet hair that about the sky watch your bigger OTAs. Next off with the tissue paper now the first thing that strikes when you when you sort of pull the tissue off this is the carbon fibre. It's, it's just one of those materials that can't fail to impress really. It, it, it just looks like a quality piece of kit. And I suppose it's because you know it's the kind of stuff that you expect uh, top range racing cars to be made of and, and such like. It's just one of those materials that you, you assume quality straight away. Uh, the focuser is also separately protected with shrink wrap and a bit of foam is just securing the knobs there. Now this is actually an upgraded focuser for the cloth draw range. It's, um, it's not like the standard focusers or the, the DS focusers. Um, they've, they've sort of beefed it up and it's got extra bearings in it and it's actually you know quite a bit more uh, beefy and we'll go into that in close-up shortly. Um, let's just have a look and take the cap off there and we can see that there's an oversized secondary there. It's a very very big secondary. As soon as you open the, 
the cap up the the size of the actual secondary just it, it smacks you in the face really and what we'll do next is I'll just take the camera off the tripod and we'll give you a few close-ups of the various parts of the scope Okay, the first thing is, as I said, the carbon fibre, it, it just sort of hits you as soon as you take the paper off the scope, it, you know, it just looks nice. Uh, onto the focuser, as you can see, the focuser is quite a much bigger, heftier sort of design. There are um, extra ball bearings in there, apparently, and it's built to support the weight of, of sort of cameras and stuff, because at the end of the day, this is a fast imaging scope above anything else. Um, and at F4, you know, it is fairly fast. Now let's just have a look down the business end, and straight away you'll see what I meant by the size of the secondary mirror. It is absolutely huge. Uh, you know, if you're used to sort of your normal uh, 200p's and and such like. If we look down there, you can see that the, the tube itself is baffled. And it's it's got the baffles in there almost all the way down the tube from where the focuser enters down the rest of the tube. Uh, other than that, the spider actually looks a little more substantial than it does do on the, the 200p's and such like. Uh, other than that, everything's just very similar but uh, but bigger. So what we're going to do next is we'll put it up on the mount and take a look at uh, how it handles on the mount. Right, we've now got the scope on the NEQ6 and as you can see by the way that it's arranged, it is actually roughly balanced there and you can tell that it's quite mirror heavy. Um, you know, we, we do have the scope sort of shifted this way a little bit. Uh, one observation that I have made whilst on the subject of, of sort of moving and sliding the scope about, it might be the newness, it might be the friction that the carbon fibre gives to the, the lining inside the rings, but I do find with this particular one that when I slacken the rings off to rotate the tube or just to move it up and down the rings, it is very, very stiff. It just seems to stick. Um, whether that will change with a little bit of wear as it, as it sort of puts pressure on the, on the linings in the rings or not, I, I just really don't know. Um, now obviously, as I said, it does look as if it's very mirror heavy. Bear in mind at this point though that at some point you will probably have a tell rad at this end and then you're going to have an eyepiece or camera equipment and everything and I think that you know judging by that that it'll probably balance out you know quite well as regards to how far over it moves in its actual rings you know I think it'll, it'll be fairly sort of central. Now uh, we will have a look at this in close up shortly and I'll just go back around the scope again when it's in uh, now that it's in this better position. Do know though that this right angled finder is my own addition, it doesn't come with a right angled finder. Now also you may be able to see from there, but we'll, we'll sort of come in closer, is that I've got a second dovetail on the top of my rings opposite where it actually mounts. I've now used my Lost Mandy dovetail on the bottom end that connects to the mount and this particular Vixen dovetail is one that I had on my previous 200p. And to be honest, I think that would be a really good move by a Skywatch is to actually supply both of the dovetails with sort of the bigger scopes, provide a Vixen and provide a Lost Mandy. For the simple reason that if your mount is Vixen, then okay, just use the Vixen um, dovetail. Uh, if it's Lost Mandy, then obviously use the Lost Mandy one, but put the Vixen on the opposite side of the, ri of the rings. I find that it's a really, really worthwhile upgrade is to put a dovetail on the opposite side of your tube rings. Um, you know, I mean, obviously you could, if, if, you, if your mount is Vixen, then you could put the Lost Mandy one on this side. What it does is, it, it to me, uh, and it's, you know, I, maybe it's just a personal preference, but it just seems to make everything sort of more rock solid and, you know, that's really what you want in your scope. But as well as that, it gives you the facility to mount stuff onto there, such as a guide scope um, or, you know, other little bits and pieces, even a DSLR if you want to, if you want to do some piggyback imaging. In fact, I'll just demonstrate that for you because I do have over here... Here we've got a... Uh, a small ST80 uh, 
commonly used as a guide scope. Now this particular one, again, it's got some additions on it. It's got the Skywatcher guide scope mount, which I've reviewed in a previous video, and it is an absolutely awesome piece of kit. Now I've also added onto that a small clamp uh, that's like so and what that does is it basically gives me a quick release system so that I can use this if I want to guide I can use it with either my, my Newtonian telescope or I can connect it onto my EDA TV refractor so I can just sort of swap and change and it really does make things just a lot easier because it's just a matter of putting it on there and tightening a screw and it, it's all there then fitted you know it's just these little additions that just tend to make things a lot easier for you um, so yeah that's guide scope mounted and as I said I do, I do think that Skywatcher should provide two dovetails of one of each sort with um, with the scopes see the simple thing is that the large amounts now the NEQ6 the EQ6 they are coming with a combination puck anyway they're coming with either a, a universal puck that will take both sorts of dovetail or if you've got a slightly older version it comes with two pucks so that you replace one for the other depending on what sort of dovetail you've got so it's no big deal for Skywatcher to do that and I, I just think it'll be a really good idea so next let's just have a little bit more of a close up now that we've got the scope in a position where we can move around it better Right, over to the back end first of all, and the, the actual mirror cell for the primary. The first thing that I noticed when looking at this is that it's actually a lot more substantial metal. Um, it, it's quite a bit thicker, and it's got this bracing in there, which the, the 200p doesn't, it's just not as substantial. Also, uh, the actual collimation bolts themselves, and if you can see those, normally um, on, say, a 200p, this size of bolt here was your actual collimation adjustment bolt and the, the locking bolts were, were just a little bit smaller on this they've beefed up again and the locking screws are actually the same as the collimation bolts were on the 200p and the actual collimation adjustment bolts are, are quite substantial and um, quite a decent hefty sort of thumb screw now bearing in mind because this is what we call a fast Newtonian um, Collimation is very, very important. It's, it's quite critical with a faster scope. And we'll go into what a faster scope and a slower scope is in a, in a couple of minutes as I just sort of uh, widen out a little bit with the, with the camera. It is something that I've covered before, but it's something that a few people aren't quite sure of. So let's just move over to the front end. Okay, I've just tried to angle it here now so that we're getting a little bit more light down this front end so that you can see it a bit better. Uh, as you can see, as I said before, the, the secondary is absolutely huge and you may get a better view here of the baffle system that's going down the tube. Um, they seem to be, I don't know if they're glued in or if they can be removed or what, it's just something that I'll maybe look at at another point. Um, but we'll just move the camera angle a little bit and see if we can give you a better view. And you can see that from the focuser downwards that the baffles go all the way down to the primary mirror. Um, and that's about it I think really. Um, we'll just give you a view of the Lost Mandy dovetail there in use. Which you know you can see that it's just a lot more substantial. Obviously I've got an add-on onto my mount there which is a, an ADM universal um, saddle plate which again just just beef things up and it, you know as you build your kit up it's just sort of the places that you go in and the big bits of kit that you accumulate um, in fact we'll just give you another a, a quick look at the focuser as well I know that's something that uh, some people will be quite interested in right so this is the the focuser on the quattro as I said before it is you know quite a lot more beefed up even the locking screw uh, for locking the focuser up is a lot more substantial and um, the focuser itself does have some collimation bolts on the I see and that is something that I actually do like to see and in, in a future video we're going to cover those uh, in a little bit more depth in fact at later points within the coming weeks or so I'm going to be doing a couple of little mods on this scope that I'm going to be also covering in videos um, it's, it's got several ball bearings in this new focuser and it is a dual speed focuser and it, it just it feels quite nice and it's it's quite rugged and solid I can't feel any slop in there 
Um, one thing though is that it doesn't have a lot of movement. It's a fairly uh, low profile sort of focuser. It doesn't have a great deal of travel in there. Um, you know, depending on what you're doing with it, you might want to add an extender uh, at some point. But that's no biggie. Um, you know, it's it's not anything to be uh, to be really concerned about. And um, there is actually another locking screw on the other side, so it does have dual locking screws on the focuser, which again, it just adds to that beefiness if you've got a lot of camera hanging on there. Uh, so let's just have a quick look at a wider view and show you how big these actually are because it's, it's you know it gets a little bit difficult sometimes showing what size they are. So we're going to put it alongside the 200p and just give you a look at that so that you can compare. Right, here we are, we've now got the two side by side. Um, this is my 200p and this is the Quattro. And as you can see, the actual lengths of the tubes is very, very similar. The 200p is actually very, very slightly longer in the tube length. So obviously the main difference is in the diameters of the two tubes. And we'll just see if we can uh, tip these two. So that you can see that. There we go. Now, as per sort of the weight difference in it, this is fairly substantially heavier um, than the, you know, than the 200p. Uh, most of that is just purely and simply because of the glass that's in there. Uh, you know, you've got a huge primary in there. Obviously, your secondary is bigger as well. Now, also earlier, I said that I was just going to explain the difference between a fast and a slow scope, and this is sort of a, a prime example of, of how to sort of show you. You can see that the tubes are actually the same length, but the mirrors, the diameter of the mirrors is, is obviously different. This one's quite a lot bigger. Now, how a telescope works in a reflector is that you have what we call a parabolic mirror in the end, which means that it's a concave mirror, like so. What that does then is it focuses the light in a triangle from that, that parabolic mirror, and it, when it forms the triangle at the point, that is what we call the focal point. Um, you know, so the actual terminology is quite descriptive with regards to telescopes. Now, if the mirror is more curved, that triangle is going to be a lot steeper. In this scope, for instance, it's, it's, it's a shallower curve, so it, it, it actually goes, it's quite a long triangle. And that's why we get fast and slow scopes, because the fast scope hits the point faster than the slow scope because the triangle is so much longer and that's, you know, that's basically all there is to it and I think that's about the full review covered as I said we are going to do a couple of little mods and, and tweaks on this scope over the coming weeks or so and I will cover those and like I said that's, that's basically it I think and I hope you've enjoyed this review and thanks for watching